let's continue where we left off. In the last video, we set up a couple of curves which we used to drive the direction of these uh, polygons which we extruded. We then combined it into one polygon and we're going to go ahead and, and stitch a couple of these areas together and try a couple of different techniques uh, focusing mainly with the, the edit mesh menu. And we'll, we'll go through some of these, uh, not too in depth, but just to kind of give you a brief introduction on how to begin to start creating uh, polygon geometry. So let's go ahead and go up to the outliner under window outliner. And here I have the basically just what we continued off with the last session, uh, these, this polygon here. And you can see here, I just renamed it GM. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I want to take some of these edges and start making some connections to other parts of the same polygon. Now, you notice that when we select this as one polygon, we can go up to mesh and separate. And you now see that these are now separate polygons. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. To do the... To bridge across and to append from one to the other, we need this to be combined. So one more time, if I go up to mesh, separate, we can separate it, we can select all of it again, go up to mesh, combine. And then we can uh, delete the history. Delete by type, history. <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and start stitching some of this across. And we're going to use a tool called the append a polygon tool, which is under the edit mesh. And we can just select one edge, select the other edge, and just hit W, or right click. And hit G to repeat the same command. So I'm just going to go and start stitching across some of these. Select one, select the other. I'm just hitting G to repeat the command. That's fine for now. Sure. Just adding a couple of connections. So let's go ahead and delete the history on this guy. Edit, delete by type history. And what we want to do now is we want to start adding a little bit of resolution here and start defining where these edges uh, are inserted. So we're going to use a tool called the Insert Edge Loop Tool. And if you go up to Edit Mesh, and you go down to Insert Edge Loop Tool and you open that up. Let me move the outliner. You can see that one of the options is to do multiple edge loops. So let's just go ahead and do one first and see what it does. You're going to click and drag along the edge and hold the left mouse button. And as soon as you let go, that edge is going to be inserted there. And of course, this is going to also insert vertices at each one of these connections. And the face, of course, is now going to be divided in two. To get rid of it, to delete it without deleting the vertices, you just double click any edge and this will highlight the entire edge loop. If you hit delete, you notice that the edges are gone. However, if you hover over, you see that there's a bit of a break here. So if you go to vertex mode, you can see that all these vertices actually didn't get deleted. And this is very important to remember because you can't have open vertices like this. Um, it's going to be very problematic later on. So if I undo, uh, the proper way to delete this edge with the vertices would be to go to Edit Mesh, down to Delete Edge Vertex. If you select that, it not only deletes the edge, but also the vertex. So let me go back to, I'm going to detach this uh, Edit Mesh window here. And let's go back to the Insert Edge Loop tool. So if you go to multiple edge loops and you type three, for example, and you click and hold, it's going to space them out equally between that edge. Let me undo that. However, if you put just one under the use equal multiplier and you click and drag, it's going to place it at the midpoint. So that's one way to ensure that you have uh, your edge starting at the midpoint of that other edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at the midpoint. 
And I'm going to add one here. I'm going to add another one here. I'm going to add one here. Add one here. I'm just going to add one to each one of these uh, midpoints here. Sure. Actually, I'm going to put one here as well. Go back to object mode. Close out of the tools. So now that we've set up some directionality here, what I want to do is I want to end up pulling these these lines here in the the midpoint lines, the edges up, and. I'm going to create what's basically going to look sort of like a pleat. Now, there's two things that need to happen. And one is we need to understand what's going to happen once we pull this. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the hotbox and go to press Maya to perspective view. I'm going to hit F. And what's going to happen once we pull this up? Because what we're going to do eventually is we're going to smooth this. So if we look at this, the smooth mesh preview, if we just hit three, you can see it's going to show you just a display of what it will look like if it is smooth. This is not the actual resolution of the geometry. So if we hit 1, it's going to take us back to, to what it actually is. So 3 is really just a display. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later. But what happens is you notice that it has to interpolate. When it tries to smooth, it has to interpolate from here to, to this edge to this edge. And... So it's a very, a very blobby transition. It's, it doesn't have any sort of resolution to make that transition a little bit tighter. And so when we use the edge loops, for example, if I add another edge loop here, and I'm going to hit 3, and of course it's going to show you the, the cage so you know where to start the edge loop. And right now I have it set to the middle, so let me go ahead and undo this. I'm going to go to the Insert Edge Loop tool, and I'm going to check relative distance from edge. I'm just going to close it. So I'm going to click and drag, and as soon as I let go, notice what happens to that edge. You notice how it now becomes tighter? And that is because it has to now interpolate from here, this edge to this edge, and this edge to this edge. So now this is a, a much has a little bit tighter uh, resolution here. So if we add another edge loop here towards the bottom, and we let it go, it's going to tighten as well. The same thing as if we add one here. And then add another one here. And you can see that it starts to tighten it, and it makes it much more, uh, much more defined. So this is one of the steps that we're going to have to take once we start doing this. So for now, we don't want to pull this edge up first. We want to add the resolution and then pull the edge up. But also, when we're doing this, we also, we're going to need to reroute some of the edges here. So we're going to use what's called the split polygon tool. And we're going to use that to basically remo manually remove edges and route them the direction which we want. So the first thing we're going to do is instead of having to go in and add different, add an edge loop like so, one here and one here, et cetera, et cetera, we're going to go ahead and actually grab what's called the offset edge loop tool. And we're going to select that. And we're going to click and drag on the middle edge. And you notice it's going to have two edge loops that are going to be on both sides of the, the edge that you selected. So I'm just going to get it approximately here. That's probably fine. And just let it go. And I'm going to go back to the top view. I'm going to do another one here. And one here. One here. Basically everywhere where I want to have that peak, that pleat that's going to be pulling up. Do one here. And I'm just being pretty approximate with this, not very, very exact yet. So 
and I'm just setting these up like so. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to, let me move this out of the way, we need to basically start routing these so that when we select this edge and this edge, we also want there to be a transition with this edge. But the problem is right now we would have to click, you can select one and select on the end and it will select that whole uh, area in between. But we don't really want, let me go to the perspective, we don't really want this like this because it's, a, it's gonna make it a kind of strange uh, transition that doesn't look very, uh, very consistent. So we're going to use the split polygon tool. There's also the interactive split tool, but I like using the split polygon tool better. So if you hover over the, the polygon and you hold shift, you have to be in object mode, and you hold shift and hold right click, you get this window, the series of options that come up, and directly to the left, I'm still holding shift and right click, is the split. If you move the mouse over to that, and then you move it to split polygon tool to the right, that's how you can access a split polygon tool. I recommend setting up a hotkey for this, which you can do by going up to window, settings and preferences, hockey editor. And once you're here, you can find the category which corresponds with the menu set. And we're gonna go down to edit mesh which is here. And we're gonna scroll down for the command name which is called split polygon tool. So once you have it here, you can key in, put whichever letter you'd like and any modifiers, for example, control, option, command, you could do uh, shift, which would make it capital. Uh, I have mine set to S. So you go ahead and put in your desired key, go down to assign, go down to save, and then close and go up to file, save preferences. So I'm going to go ahead now and grab the, well, before we do the split polygon tool, I'm going to go back to object mode. Uh, I'm going to grab the offset edge loop tool again. And I'm going to just drag this guy across like so to get the edge which we want to route from here. So I'm going to go back to object mode. And I'm going to delete the history. So edit, delete by type, history. And I'm going to hit S again to get the split polygon tool. And so what we want is we want this edge and we want to route it so that it, this edge coming along turns in and meets with this edge in a nice uh, transition so that it doesn't have this kind of cross in between when we pull it up along the normal. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to, we want to move this edge to here. And I'm going to grab this one to here. I'm going to select this whole edge loop here and go down to delete edge vertex. So we need to move this point, this vertex from here to here. And we can do this a couple of different ways. If we wanted to merge between these two in the center, we could select both of these vertices and do merge to center, which will do this. Or we could select the uh, merge vertex tool, which we click and drag on one, and with the second one we drag to is the one it's snapping to. So we could do either one of those. Or we could do this manually. We can add an edge from here down to here and then merge the other two together. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this edge and this edge, and I'm going to do delete edge vertex. And I want to just snap these two together. So I'm going to select this one and this one and do merge to center. And then move this vertex down so that we have the same distance here. Now you'll notice that it's right now the manipulator isn't facing the direction which we want. So one thing we could do to specify which axis we wanted to move along is we can double click the move tool. Let me close out of the outliner. And under the move axis, there's an option for set to edge. So if we select set to edge and just pick that edge, you see that the manipulator now changed to move along that axis, which is perfect. We could also select this one and move it back some. Either way, it's fine. 
Because what's nice about this is then it allows us to have this transition happen a little bit more seamlessly. If we double click this edge and shift double click this edge and shift double click this edge, when we pull this up, you can see now that it's a much nicer transition between these. So we'll pull that back down. So we need to do this, go back to vertex mode. We need to do this for, for every place where there is a, an intersection here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and the next lesson will continue from this point. I'll go ahead and finish out all the intersections and we'll continue from there.